Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about what to do when FFR does not agree with IFR or RFR uh, in your stable uh, CED patients. So um, here is a fairly common scenario. Uh, we have a 60-year-old man uh, who has been having exertional angina. He is on a single anti-anginal agent, and he was referred to you because a coronary CTA suggested a severe stenosis in the mid-LED. So on cath, you see that there is indeed a stenosis in the mid-LED, but angiographically, it doesn't look particularly severe and at most moderate, and certainly not as bad as it appeared on the uh, coronary CTA. So you do an RFR, and it is a 0.88, uh, which is just positive. Uh, but the lesion just doesn't look that bad, so you do an FFR uh, to double check. And FFR came back at 0.84, uh, which is just negative. Uh, so now we have a disagreement, a discordance uh, between the RFR and FFR. Uh, what do you do now? Uh, which result uh, do you believe? So um, there have been a few studies that have uh, looked at uh, the, this question. They've all been uh, relatively small studies. Um, this uh, 2023 uh, Japanese study uh, looked at clinical outcomes out to four years uh, for 137 consecutive patients uh, with discordant RFR and FFR results. And uh, here is uh, the data. Uh, when both FFR and RFR are uh, abnormal, uh, the risk is highest, and that's the red curve, and it's uh, what we expect. And when they're both normal, um, the risk is lowest, and that's the blue curve, uh, also what we expect. Um, the interesting thing is that when FFR and RFR disagree, uh, which is the green curve, the risk is not statistically different from when they are both negative. The blue curve and the green curve overlap to a large degree. In other words, it seems safe to defer PCI when FFR and RFR disagree. The big caveat here is that this is a small study and they could not differentiate between the outcomes of the two possible discordant groups, FFR positive, RFR negative patients versus FFR negative and RFR positive patients. Okay, um, here's another study now looking at discordant results amongst uh, different hemodynamic indices, including IFR, RFR, and FFR. This was a larger study uh, involving uh, 435 patients and looked at outcomes out to two years. And uh, here are the results uh, for IFR and RFR. Uh, again, when the indices agree, we get what we expect. If the indices are positive, the risk of an adverse event is highest. If the indices are negative, the risk is lowest. But again, the interesting thing is that when the indices disagree, one positive and one negative, the risk is not statistically different from when they are both negative. And the more interesting thing is that it did not matter which was positive and which was negative. So for instance, even if the FFR is positive and the RFR is negative, which is the green curve, the risk of an adverse event is not statistically different from when they are both negative. Here's another study looking at specifically at discordant IFR versus FFR in 596 patients uh, with clinical outcomes out to five years. And the message is basically the same. Uh, when IFR and FFR are both positive, red curve, risk is highest. When IFR and FFR are both negative, blue curve, uh, risk is lowest. When they disagree, uh, the results are not statistically different from when they are both negative. However, here of the larger patient numbers, we do see a trend um, when the FFR is positive and IFR is negative, which is the orange curve, this, uh, the risk does seem to trend higher but again, it doesn't quite reach a statistical uh, significance. All right, um, so take home messages. Um, when your IFR or RFR agrees with your FFR, uh, the risk category is clear. If they are both positive, revascularize as clinically appropriate. If they are both negative, then it, it seems safe to uh, defer a revascularization. When they disagree, uh, the limited data, data that we have suggests that deferring revascularization would be reasonable, and this is actually what we did for our patient in this case. 
The interesting thing to me is that uh, the FFR value does not seem to trump IFR or RFR. A positive FFR with negative IFR or RFR does not seem to identify patients with a higher risk than patients with uh, concordant negative uh, results. So the limited data that we have right now suggests that a patient with a positive FFR and a negative RFR does not automatically have to be revascularized. Thank you for watching.